that this is real and that it'll stay real, we'd all better reach the same conclusion that the level of instruction to date has been real. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of the Very Real Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Pirates versus Dodgers tonight at PNC Park, 6.35 p.m. First pitch. I'll be there covering it for DK Pittsburgh Sports, writing a column off it. Hope you can check that out and read it as well and i will be fixated i guess would be the right word on whether or not in particular this offense can get things going let's remember that even though the pirates did just sweep the reds in four games the bats went awfully quiet over the weekend and they needed some superlative pitching to finish off cincinnati you want to see it doesn't have to look like it did in denver But it's got to look a lot better than it did against the Reds, or you're going to be leaning way too much on your pitching. And there's no way that I can get through any kind of discussion about whether or not the offense is genuine without bringing up one of my favorite subjects from last season. That, of course, being Andy Haynes again and Andy Haynes again and all throughout the season. I had very little use for this man's work. I had very little evidence of a consistent approach that would allow me to believe that there was some kind of commonality to what the Pirates were doing poorly, and now in this case, well. If you want to be fair to Haynes, I'm going to start with a couple of things. One is that I was really tough on Oscar Marine a couple of years ago. Marine has been outstanding. He's been a guy who's gotten credit from both veterans and youngsters alike in having really made a difference for him. And most importantly, it's shown in the numbers. So in parentheses, what I'm saying there is my initial impression doesn't always hold. Okay. Where Haynes is concerned, what I'm looking for more than anything else and I did say this last year a lot, aggression within the zone, aggression within the space, the portion of the zone where the hitter is most effective. And you know what? For a lot of guys, for a lot of individual hitters this season, I've seen it. So you can take the broader numbers. You can take that stuff and say, hey, this is this is just terrific. Uh, the Pirates are now top 10, top 12 in pretty much every offensive category, and I'm talking about across the board, including runs. The one that I always look to, OPS, on base plus slugging percentage, I see it as a beautiful catch-all. 765 figure, eighth in the majors. Again, that's just a, even without the context of where they were last year, that is a really, really, really good figure. The ones that I look to beyond that, that really jump out at me, though. How about ranking seventh in walks right now with 88? Yes, it helps to have an Andrew McCutcheon on your team who kind of knows what he's doing and works a walk as well as anyone on this lineup. But it's very different, very different, when you see O'Neill Cruz was doing it before he got hurt, when you see Rodolfo Castro, who I thought might never walk. I'm talking about in like his pro career, and he's doing it. And how about Jack Sawinski? There's been a a fair amount of fuss about Jack's uh, power production being back, and that's as it should be. Jack's a home run hitter, and Jack's hitting home runs again, so all is right with Jack. What is being missed, I think, by a lot of people is that in between all those Jack Jacks are some walk walks. He's getting on base, but he's also shrinking that strike zone so he doesn't put himself into a position where he either chops some cheapy ground out or swings out of the zone. And we've seen both of those things from him in the past. That, to me, is a credit to Haynes. And I offer that 
unapologetically without retraction. By the way, situations change, stances change. I never overthink that component to this job, meaning mine. When stuff changes, if you stay stubborn, you, then you're just the fool. I never saw this type of result from Haynes to hitters last season, regardless of how many games they lost, regardless of where they finished statistically. But this season, I've seen all that plus one other. And that would be, very specifically, Haynes' work over the offseason with Brian Reynolds. First off, it was Reynolds' choice to go to Haynes. And remember, Reynolds wasn't feeling all that chummy with the Pirates over the better part of the winter. He still chose Haynes, still went and worked out with Haynes, had Haynes there over his shoulder in hitting cages. And then he went through the spring looking like the best version of Brian Reynolds, and then he went into the season looking like the best version of Babe Ruth before his recent slide. I will give credit for that, obviously some to Reynolds, but also to Haynes. See, this isn't hard. This isn't hard. Get the result. Get the pat on the back. You know, from all of us. From all of us. Get the result. The Pirates are right now getting results. And that includes their two most important coaches under Derek Shelton. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door, your car, your bike, your computer, your gun. Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit projectchildsafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Today's J1Q comes from Tristan, who says, Wait a minute, DK, aren't you the same guy who told us before the season to not get too excited because the new players weren't much better than the ones they were replacing and that this season would be just another punt? Is everyone just playing much better than expected or what changed? Tristan, start recording, my man. Here it comes. You ready? Because I'm going to expect you to play this every time. I hear this from anybody else. You're going to be the one playing it for them. You ready? Here is what changed. They changed. And I'm not even going to bash them for it. I'm not going to do anything retroactively for it because they changed their minds to make the right decision. What I was told, and not on some rumor level, Okay, but what I was told by the people who run the Pirates was that 2023 wasn't going to be that year and that they were going to treat it as such. Therefore, it is my job, as you know, to report these things, hence the term reporter, to the people who listen to this program, to the people who read my stuff on DK Pittsburgh Sports, and I did precisely that. I'm not guessing at what this stance was on their part because I heard it directly from them, all right? There's also a reason, by the way, that there's been absolutely no blowback from anyone within the organization about the whole punting thing because they knew that's what their intent was. However, something happened around Christmas time in which there was a 
bigger decision made. I don't know by whom. I would love to know so that I could give that individual or group of individuals the appropriate credit. I'm going to have to assume that Ben Charrington, Travis Williams, and Bob Nutting, or some combination thereof, met and figured this out. But they're the ones who said, you know what? No, we kind of like this. We're going to do this. Here's X amount of payroll. Go get some free agents. Here's a phone call in, in Nutting's case that I got from Kutch. Let's act on this. Let's bring him back. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And they changed. That's what changed. Not me. Not my stance. And you mentioned the players. Well, yeah, the players have obviously been above and beyond. But even before what we saw occur in, through the first 23 games of this schedule, I was saying to you as far back as mid-February that they had changed. So where you got this idea that I was telling you to not get too excited or whatever, you're literally just making that up. Pardon my directness here, but you're literally making that up because I don't ever tell fans how to feel. It's just not part of what I believe in in this role. I'll tell you what I believe in. I'll tell you what I want to criticize. I'll tell you what I want to praise, but I'm not going to tell you how to feel. So I definitely wouldn't have told you to either A, get excited, or B, not get excited. That flat out didn't happen. But again, I'm going to stress here that the credit for this goes to the people who made the decision. Listen, there's a reason that I really, really, really hated the concept of the punt. There's a reason that I criticized it as I did. It's because I thought they had a chance to take a significant stride forward in 2023. I thought it'd be for the betterment of the franchise if they moved in that direction. And guess what? That was the correct stance to take in that circumstance. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone who listens to Daily Shot of Pirates. Again, I'll be covering the game tonight. Make sure you check out my written stuff on DK Pittsburgh Sports, and we will be here again tomorrow. Tomorrow.